Hello guys, this is Group 3 and our topic for today is all about the selection of a civil engineer. So in general, selection and engagement of a civil engineer is of the most important decisions to be made during the development of an engineering project. No two civil engineers have the same training, experience, capabilities, personnel, workloads, and particular abilities. Selection of the most qualified civil engineer for a specific project results in a well-planned, designed, economical and successful project. So here's an overview of the topics. You have the basis for selection, client selection committee, qualification-based selection, QBS procedure, and selection for procedure for level of effort contract. For the basis of, of selection, the client should establish administrative policy and criteria for the selection of qualified civil engineers for particular projects. The client's first step is to define the proposed scope of the project. By clearly defining the services which the civil engineer is to furnish, the client can accurately judge whether or not the civil engineer is best equipped to provide them. So the client determines performance requirements. Some of the factors that should be considered in the selection process are the professional and ethical reputation of the civil engineer and his staff. So this is basically a simple background checking as determined through inquiries of the previous clients and other references. So the next one is that Responsible civil engineers and its employees must be registered professional civil engineers. Although this does not necessarily mean that a non-registered civil engineer cannot be hired, but hiring a registered civil engineer can provide more confidence in the execution of the projects and also some additional perks that come along with it. So, civil engineers should have demonstrated qualifications and expertise performing the services required for the project. So, this means that it is important that the engineer has passed the qualifications and is enough expertise that are required to handle the project. So the fourth one is that civil engineers should be able to assign qualified engineering staff who will be in responsible charge of the project and will be able to provide and complete the required services within the time allotted. So being able to find the right man for the right job is also one of the main responsibilities of a civil engineer. So he or she should be able to take the pressure of being in charge of the project and has enough skills in order to finish all the requirements of the project ahead of time. So, civil engineers should have the necessary financial and business resources to accomplish the assignment and provide continuing service. So since the financial and business part of the project is a vital element in order to keep it afloat, civil engineers should be able to manage these resources well and be well versed in these areas as well in order to make the project successful. So next, we move on to the Client Selection Committee. So within the client's organization, there should be an established administrative policy for resignating the persons authorized to select or recommend selection of civil engineers for specific assignments. So the persons appointed should be familiar with the project requirements, kept free of internal or external pressure during the selection process. So it is important that the members of the committee should be well versed in the type of project and the conditions that must be met in order for it to be successful. Additionally, being free of internal and external pressures ensures that the members of the committee will be able to make logical decisions and be able to accurately determine what type of civil engineer does the project need. So one satisfactory procedure is to utilize a selection committee of three or more individuals, at least one of whom is a professional engineer of the appropriate discipline. So, having an engineer in the committee is a big advantage since he or she knows the technical terms associated with the project and thus be able to assess the situation more accurately. For public projects, the clients must choose individuals who demonstrate objectivity in order to avoid the appearance of a conflict of interest in the selection of the civil engineer. So, having individuals of displays objectivity means that they are not as easily prone to bias and favoritism. For the last one, at least one of the individuals should be truly familiar with the civil engineering practices. The committee is responsible for making recommendations after conducting appropriate investigations, interviews, and inquiries. Qualification-Based Selection or QBS Procedure The selection procedure is considerably enhanced when the client is fully familiar with the purpose and nature of the proposed project, can describe the project in detail, and can prepare a project scope and outline of the service expected of the civil engineer. In some cases, the client may not have professional staff available to define the project scope and describe the required services. The client should still be familiar enough with the project requirements to understand what is expected of the civil engineer. 
The selection procedure, however, can be modified to suit the circumstances. Here are the usual steps in the selection procedure of a client. First, the client may issue a request for qualification, RFQ, or request for proposal, RFP. RFQs are normally used to a certain general qualification in a selected area of expertise, while RFPs are used to seek civil engineers for creating short list for selecting a civil engineer for a specific project. Second, prepare a budget for the staff time and cost. Third, evaluate the statement of qualifications received. Select at least three civil engineers or firms that may appear to be the best qualified for the specific product. Fourth, write a letter to each civil engineer or selected for further consideration describing the proposed project in detail, including a project scope and outline of service required and asking a proposal describing in detail the civil engineer's plan for managing and performing the required services, the personnel to be assigned, the proposed schedule, experience with similar projects, office location in which services are to be performed, financial standing, present workload, and references. Fifth, invite the civil engineer or firms to meet individually. The client may consider supplementing the selection committee with personnel who have specialized expertise to advise qualification and experience of each civil engineer or firm, the capability to provide the services within the time allotted, and the key personnel to be assigned to the project. Sixth, check the recent clients of each civil engineer or firm to determine the quality of performance. 7. List the civil engineer or firms in the order of preference, taking into account their approach and understanding of the project reputation, experience, financial standing, size, personnel available, quality of preference, workload, location, and other factors pertinent to the project being considered. 8. Invite the civil engineer considered to be the best qualified to develop a detailed scope. Ninth. The compensation proposed by the civil engineers should be evaluated on the basis of the client's experience and budget estimate, taking account of the range of charges reported in Section 4, herein giving consideration to the project's special characteristics and scope of services agreed upon. Fair and reasonable compensation to the civil engineer is vital to the success of the project since it will enable the consultant's expertise to be fully utilized. 10. If the satisfactory agreement is not reached with the first civil engineer, the negotiations should be terminated and the civil engineer or firm be notified in writing to that effect. Similar negotiations would then be held with the second civil engineer or firm and if necessary with the third civil engineer. If no accord is reached, the client should seek outside assistance before continuing with the selection process. Such a procedure will usually result in development of the satisfactory contract. All such negotiations should be on a strictly confidential basis. In no case should the compensation discussed with one civil engineer be disclosed to another. And last, when agreement has been reached on a scope, schedule, and compensation, the client and selected civil engineer should formalize their agreement with a written contract. The next is the selection procedure for level of effort contracts. A level of effort type of contract for engineering services is a contract procedure used to supplement a client staff. Professional engineering and architectural societies recognize QBS as the preferred method for procurement of professional services. Now on to bidding for consulting civil engineering services. There are many reasons why bidding for consulting civil engineering services often produce unsatisfactory results for the clients, and these are the reasons why. 1. Bidding does not recognize professional judgment, which is the key difference between professional service and the furnishing of products. The judgment is an essential in ingredient in quality engineering services. Second, it is virtually impossible to completely detail in advance the scope of services required for an engineering project, especially for the study and preliminary phases, 
without a lengthy discussion and negotiation with the selected firm. Number 3. In-depth studies and analysis by the consulting civil engineer are not likely to be performed. The consulting civil engineer selected by the lowest bid will often provide only the minimum services necessary to satisfy the client's scope and services. Number 4. The consulting civil engineer's ability to be flexible and creative in meeting the client's requirement is severely limited. Number 5. The engineering designs are likely to be minimal in completeness with the details left to the contractor. Now the two envelope systems which involves First, the submission of technical proposal in one envelope. Second, a price proposal in the second envelope. The two envelope system is not recommended. If used as intended, it is similar to the recommended QBS procedure. <clears throat> the two envelope system is not recommended. If used as intended, it is similar to the recommended QBS procedure, except that the added cost to prepare a comprehensive scope and price discourages some consulting civil engineer from participating. The cost to prepare a proper price proposal are considerable to the firms not selected, which increases the overall business cost of the consulting civil engineering and ultimately of the clients. And that is all. Thank you. Have a nice day.